So the Unreal Engine 5 alpha build just released this morning and everyone is freaking out. People are saying it's the next generation of gaming and that the industry will never be the same. But the big question is, why is Unreal Engine 5 a big deal? Two reasons, Lumen and Nanite. Since the dawn of computer graphics, developers have tried to achieve the elusive real-time global illumination. That means getting dynamic bounce light without having to wait hours for a single frame to render. Here I have Unreal Engine 5 open right now and Lumens is not turned on. This is what we used to get in Unreal Engine 4. Now if I turn on Lumens, we immediately get that bounce lighting and if I grab the light right here and move it around, we can see that lighting being transferred over all the different objects. So this was impossible back in Unreal Engine 4 and keep in mind we're not even using RTX ray tracing. So this also works on AMD cards as well as NVIDIA cards. This also works for emissive material. So I can drag an emissive material on my spear and delete my light. And this movable spear is also casting light, which was impossible in previous engines. Here's another good example of lumens. As you can see, we can't see anything. But as soon as I move this rock away, we can see that we are in a cave and the cave slowly starts to illuminate more and more until it's very illuminated. So all that light you see right there, that's bounce light. That is indirect global illumination. And then as soon as we cover our cave again, all of that nice bounce lighting disappears. Next up is Nanite. Nanite, very simply put, allows for dynamic level of detail. This means you can have an asset that comprises of millions of polygons, but it is still performant in game because those polygons dynamically deform lowering the total amount of vertices on a static mesh. This allows for high poly movie assets to be used in game and artists now have the option to not use a normal map, allowing the geometry to take care of the fine detail. But there are some caveats. It only works for static meshes. So Nanite will not work for grass or deforming geometry like skeletal meshes, which is what characters use. There was some confusion with people saying the Nanite works on skeletal meshes since the robot you see here is using it. I had my suspicions, so I decided to download the demo and check out the robot myself, and my suspicions were correct. The geometry of the robot is not a deforming skeletal mesh. Instead, it's a bunch of static meshes that are then attached to a dummy skeletal mesh. So this is why Epic Games decided to make a robot, and that's because robot parts, they don't deform like human skin does. Robot parts are just static, which is great for Nanite. This is also a reason why Epic Games chose to use a desert as their example environment, since deserts comprise of a bunch of static meshes like cliffs, rocks, and dirt, which works well with Nanite. So to show you the power of Nanite, here is our human reference, and here is the massive open world that's currently being powered by Nanite. And we can actually visualize what Nanite is doing by coming up here to Lit, and then nanite visualization, and then we could click on triangles. So here we can see that we're pretty much getting one pixel per triangle. So that is unheard of for a game engine. And if we zoom in, we can see that there is dynamic LED. So when we zoom really far, those polygons get bigger and bigger, but then when we zoom up close, those polygons get smaller and smaller and smaller to compensate for the detail the camera is trying to look at. So that's the power of Nanite. Besides Lumen and Nanites, we also get access to 15,000 free scanned assets, specifically the Megascans library. Right off the bat with an Unreal Engine, we don't have to download a second program like beforehand. So if we go into our content browser, we go to add, and we can do add Quixel content. So we can read in something right now, let's go to 3D assets, and we can drag in any of these into our scene just like this as if it's actually in the content browser and unreal will automatically start to download it for us and import it just like this so if i actually zoom out we can see that we automatically got our asset in no hassle whatsoever everything is working great and that is amazing what program do you know that comes with fifteen thousand assets ready to go and finally this is Unreal Engine 4's default user interface. And this is Unreal Engine 5's default user interface. The difference is literally night and day. I don't know how Unreal Engine 4 was able to get away with it for this long. It will take some getting used to, but it's worth it. So you might be wondering to yourself, how do I learn Unreal Engine 5? 
Well, you are just in luck. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video right now, the Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorial series is up right now on my channel, link in the description below. If it's not, then it should be coming up very shortly. It's also good to know that I just launched the Unreal Sensei Masterclass. We're gonna take a deeper dive into Unreal Engine and learn some of the fundamentals and some topics that are pretty hard to go over on the channel. And we're also gonna be doing a lot of exclusive live streams there too. So if you wanna support the channel, you could go ahead and check that out, link in the description below. So with all that being said, good luck in Unreal Engine 5 and farewell.